Welcome back to our biomass class, where we're delving deeper into the fascinating world of conversion of biomass resources into heat and power. This video was made with the support of Inno Energy. Remember that this biomass energy course has nine lessons. Lesson 5 has an introduction and several videos that go deeper in some applications of biomass combustion. Let's start with the introduction to biomass combustion. Lignocellulosic materials can be converted into energy by thermochemical processes, which are combustion, gasification, and pyrolysis. The differences between them are the amount of oxygen, which determines the degree of oxidation of biomass, and the products obtained in each process. Let's focus on combustion, particularly in the combustion of wood, as an example of lignocellulosic biofuel. Combustion takes place when there is enough oxygen to have a complete oxidation. But before studying in detail the combustion of wood, let's take a look to the its chemical structure. Wood is mainly composed by cellulose, hemocellulose, and lignin, very complex organic compounds. It also contains water and mineral matter, like oxides, carbonates, and silicates. Cellulose is a polysaccharide consisting of a linear chain of several hundred to many thousands of linked D-glucose units. Carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms are linked by chemical bounds. So, now we can study in detail how combustion works. We will also go into what products of combustion are. Let's start with the phases of combustion. A fire needs the three components fuel, oxygen, and heat. At the beginning, there is no heat, so fire starts with ignition, the application of an external source of heat. Once started, combustion produces its own heat. And it will continue as long as there is enough oxygen and fuel's presence. This is known as combustion propagation. Then, Extinction occurs when the fire triangle is broken because the lack of heat, oxygen, or fuel. Now, let's see what are the processes that take place during wood combustion. The first stage is drying. When wood is heated, it dries until all the water is vaporized. The higher the water content, the more energy this takes. Thermal decomposition. At 150 degrees Celsius, wood begins to break down. Some of the chemical bounds break. As a result, different chemical compounds are released into the air. This phase is also called pyrolysis. And it takes place at up to 550 degrees. Oxidation. When these vapors mix at high temperature with the oxygen from the air, they burn and produce heat and light. This happens between 550 and 1,100 degrees. The heat released is what sustains the flame of the fire for the fire propagation. Finally, products of the combustion of wood. If all wood is converted into carbon dioxide and water, plus ash, it is called complete combustion. However, complete combustion is difficult to achieve because it is a slow process that needs time. And not all the carbon atoms find oxygen to react with and form carbon dioxide. Therefore, we normally get some products from the incomplete combustion of wood. First of all, compounds like carbon monoxide can be produced. Unburned fuel can also be released in the form of particles. The combustion of wood can also produce nitrogen oxides. These types of compounds form smoke. And after combustion, the mineral matter remains in the solid state as ash. So, the products that we get in the combustion of wood are smoke and ash. Wrapping up. Wood is mainly composed by complex organic compounds like cellulose, hemocellulose, and lignin. 
Additionally, it contains water and inorganic compounds. Combustion starts with the application of external heat, the ignition phase. The heat generated allows the combustion propagation. During the drying phase, the water content of biomass is vaporized. At higher temperatures, the organic compound decompose in simple molecules during the pyrolysis phase. Finally, these simple molecules react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water during the oxidation phase. An incomplete combustion can also produce carbon monoxide and other pollutants like carbon particles. In all cases, combustion can also produce nitrogen oxides or NOx. Even though biomass combustion is complex and slow, it is the simplest way to produce heat. Please watch the videos about biomass combustion applications to know more about how biomass can be used to produce heat and electricity. Also, the videos about gasification and pyrolysis to know more about other thermochemical processes.